So here we have the backside of the briefing sheet, which is related to the weight and balance and the aircraft performance. I have made some notes and formulas for instructional purposes, but when you follow along with me, you can simply just put down the numbers. So the weight and balance section is just a table that we have to fill in step by step with some simple mathematical calculations. So make sure to have a calculator in hand during this process. So the whole table is based on a simple formula, which is weight times arm equals to moment. So weight is just the weight in pounds. This x means multiplication, so multiply by arm, which is in inches. Arm is just, you can think of it as the distance from the engine firewall. So a pilot will be sitting about 77 inches after the engine firewall. And the moment is simply a product of weight times arm. And usually it's going to be a big number. That's why we need the calculator to make sure all the calculations are precise, usually down to two decimal places. So first, what we need is we need to obtain the information of the aircraft, November 911 Mike Zulu, and we need the basic empty weight. So this basic empty weight have to come from a documentation called the weight and balance, which is a documentation produced by a certified AMP who actually weighed the aircraft. So to get that information, what we need to do is go to the Dynasty Aviation's website, dynastyaviation.net, and once you go to this website, we'll click on Menu, Discover, and over here you can find Student Resources. Then, since we're flying the sling, we'll click on the sling LSA. And moving down, we can find the wet and balance information for November 911 Mike Zulu. We'll click on it. And what we need to find is the basic empty weight over here, A57.59, and also the moment of the aircraft, which is 573.22.22. So we'll go back to our paper and we'll put in those numbers. So A57.59 provided by the documentation and with the moment of 57322.22. So again, this is measured by the AMP. Moving on, we have the pilot and passenger's weight. So in this example, the passenger is 160 pounds and the instructor is 140 pounds. So the total weight between the pilot and passenger together is 300 pounds. Multiply by 77.12, and these numbers are provided by the POH. So multiply by 77.12, we'll get a number of 23136. Then we'll move down to the next section, which is baggage of the front. So for the sling, the front baggage area, is we don't put anything there, so we'll put a zero. So when you have zero multiplied by a number, you always get zero as well. The next section is the baggage of the rear compartment, which usually consists of the student's flight bag and the instructor's flight bag, and we'll call it five pounds. So five multiply by 114.02, we'll get a number of 570.1. The next section is the fuel sections, which we need to calculate how much fuel we can carry without passing the maximum limit of 1,320 pounds which is the maximum certified takeoff weight for the light sport aircraft. So to calculate how much fuel we can carry, what we'll do is we'll use the maximum weight of 1320, we'll minus five pounds, which is the baggage, minus 300, which is the passenger, and minus the aircraft weight, which is A57.59. And once I subtract all those numbers, whatever is left is how much fuel I can carry. So we can carry about 157.41 pounds of fuel, and we'll lower that number to about 157 pounds to be conservative. So 157 multiplied by 59.48 will give us a number of 9338.36. And moving on to the takeoff weight, so this is how much weight the airplane is during takeoff, which is very simple. So the takeoff weight would just be all this weight Add it up together. So for the takeoff weight will be 857.59 which is the aircraft weight plus the pilot and passenger's weight plus the baggage 
and plus the fuel that we calculated the airplane can carry. So the total will be a 13, 19.59 pounds. The moment will be the same thing. So for the takeoff moment, what we need to do is add all the moment previously that we have for all the different sections. And the total of those moment will be our takeoff moment, which is 90366.68. So now over here, we can calculate the CG for takeoff, which is the center of gravity. Again, it's a very simple formula. We'll go just use moment divided by weight. So the moment will be this number over here, 90366.68, divided by the takeoff weight, which is 1319.59. And we'll get a number CG of 68.48. Okay, and moving down, we have the fuel burn. So during the flight, the airplane is burning fuel. That means during the flight, the weight will be decreased. So when the airplane lands, it will have a lower weight than compared to during the takeoff. So how much fuel do we burn in the sling? According to the POH, it says about 4.1 gallons per hour. And usually each lesson is no more than two hours, so we're gonna assume it's a two hours of fuel burn. And that will be a total of 8.2 gallons. So since we're operating with pounds, not gallons, a general rule to convert from fuel from gallons to pounds will be just multiplied by six. So for the flight, we're likely to burn about 8.2 gallons of fuel, which translate to 49.2 pounds of fuel. And since we're burning fuel, we need to put a negative number for the sections. So negative 49.2 multiply by 59.48 we'll get a number of negative 2926.42. So for the landing weight, how we're gonna get this number is we're gonna use the takeoff weight, which is 1319.59, and during the flight, we burned about 49.2 pounds of fuel. So 1319.59 minus 49.2, that would be our landing weight. So the airplane, when it lands after burning 49.2 pounds of fuel, will be 1270.39 pounds. So same thing over here. For the moment, we have the takeoff moment minus the fuel burn moment. So 90366.68 minus 2926.42 will give us a landing moment of 87440.26. Over here for the CG, we'll use the same formula. Total moment divided by total weight so it will be 87440.26 from the landing moment divided by 1270.39, which is the landing weight. And we'll get a CG of 68.83. Once we get those two numbers, what we need to do is, according to the POH, we need to convert it to a number called the percent MAC, which we have to formulate over here. So all we need to do is take this two number and we'll plug it into the CG over here. So we're gonna get two percent Mach number at the end, one for takeoff and one for landing, which because there are two different numbers. So for the takeoff percent Mach, we'll use the number of 68.48 CG. So once we plug it in, 68.48 minus 53.784 multiplied by 100 divided by 52.716, we'll get a takeoff percent MAC of 27.88. And then we'll do the same thing for landing percent MAC, which we'll use 68.83 SLCG. We'll plug it in, go through the formula, and we'll get a percent MAC of 28.54 of landing percent MAC. And here I make a note, make sure to press the equal sign each time on the calculator. So what you do is you put in the CG minus 53.784, you press equal, multiply by 100, you press equal, and you divide it by 52.716 and press equal again. And that's how we make sure the number is accurate. Then finally, we'll come down here for the allowable CG envelope. On the right side, you see this is the aircraft's weight. And over here at the bottom, we have the percent MAC. Okay, so we wanna make sure we plug in the weight and the percent MAC to make sure where they intersect is inside the safety envelope. 
So a general rule is if your takeoff percent Mac and your landing percent Mac it's inside this safety envelope, that means the airplane is within the safety range to take off or land. If it's outside of it, the airplane will be unstable and it will be unsafe for takeoff and landing. So for the takeoff, we can see our takeoff weight is 1319.59, which can come over here. And we can see that's about 1319.59. And then we'll draw a straight line across. And then we we'll find the takeoff percent Mac, which we we'll calculated to be 27.88. So we'll come down here, we'll find about 27.88. We draw a line straight up, and where the intersect just happened to be inside the safety envelope which means I can safely take off for this weight. All right, and moving on to landing, we have the landing weight of 1270.39, and let's take a look. So 1212.54, so it's about a little bit above it right here. We'll draw a straight line across, and let's find the landing percent Mac, which is 28.54 that we calculated. We'll come down here, we'll find about 28.54 over here, and we'll draw a straight line up with the intercept and see it's also inside the safety envelope, which means the airplane can safely land in this weight configuration. Now finally, we'll move on to the performance section, which we can find the information here using our POH. So we'll have the ground roll for takeoff and landing and 50 foot obstacle distance for takeoff and landing. So to get these four number, what we need to do is we need to go to Dynasty Aviation's website again, over here, and then we'll scroll down and we'll find the Sling LSA POH. Once we find the POH, what we want to do is we we'll want to go to Section 5 for the performance sections. So we can scroll down to find the menu. Once we find the menu, which we'll is click on performance sections. In the performance section, we'll move on to takeoff and landing distance and click on it, which will bring us to this table. So over here, we'll have the takeoff distance and landing distance. And what we want is the concrete and tar since we're taking off from a paved runway. So we can see the run distance is 395, and that's what we'll put in for the takeoff. And we'll have the obstacle distance of 755. So we'll go back, we'll put in 395, and 755. And we'll do the same thing for landing. So for landing, we'll go to the bottom, we'll find concrete, the landing distance is 265, and the obstacle distance will be 820. So we'll put in 265 and 820. Now finally, we need to find the runway available distance. So for this section, what we need to use, we need to go back to sky vector, and that will give us access to the chart supplement, which will provide all the information regarding each runway of the airport. So let's go to chart supplement by going to Sky Vector, and we'll find North Perry Airport. We'll click on it. Click on North Perry Airport. Once we're over at this page, we'll move over to the left. You see is chart supplement sections, and once we hover over we can find all the information regarding the runway we're using. So since we're using runway one left, we can see over here, the distance or the length of the runway is 3,350 feet, which means for takeoff, we have 3,350 feet available for takeoff. But then we move down to runway one left specifically, at the end over here, you'll see a th threshold displaced 350 feet. So it means if we're using runway one left, we have the full runway for takeoff, but to land, we cannot use the first 350 feet of the runway, which you can see is depicted over here, the three circular symbols over here. So for takeoff, we can use the whole runway, but for landing, we can only use anywhere from here all the way to the end, and that's called displaced threshold, which is 350 feet. So, to put in the number, the takeoff distance for runway one left will be 3,350 feet. But for the landing, since the threshold displaced is 350 feet, 
we'll go 3350 minus 350 feet, which will give us a runway available to land of 3000 feet. So to summarize for the back side of the briefing sheet, number one, we'll use the student resource page on dynastyaviation.net to find the weight and balance and the POH information. Number two, all the numbers calculated down to two decimal places. Number three, we'll use the maximum weight of 1320 pounds to calculate how much fuel is allowed to be on board the aircraft. Number four, we'll use 4.1 gallons per hour as our fuel burn, and we'll make sure to put a negative before the number. Number five, we'll use the POH section five for the takeoff and landing distances. And number six, we'll use Skyfactor as a portal so we can access the most recent chart supplement information for the runway distances.